Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mr. Nambane, and today we will be discussing momentum and impulse. But now, be, before we get into that, uh, let me take this opportunity and say, uh, thank you very much for 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 watching. Uh, kindly like our page on Facebook. Uh, it's Nambani Academy, uh, the Institute for Math and Science, and on face and on YouTube, uh, it's Nambani Academy. So remember, the idea here is basically to share different strategies on how to to master your your physical science. Uh, because we, we 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 understand and know that physical science it's a national crisis that a majority of us uh, in myself included we have challenges uh, here and there so the idea of these videos or the channel itself is basically to try and uh, give you a step ahead or a, a way of saying uh, let's support you such that you are able now to achieve to to the desired level so i usually start my lessons and topics uh, at the center and at the center obviously i will have my momentum and impulse as my key key topic but obviously before i can get into any detail further i need also to be able to explain what is momentum that should be the key uh, the first key weight that i am looking for because it clearly says momentum and impulse but now remember when we need to define a certain specific weight or a certain specific principle in physics we don't go looking for any other thing but we use our exam guidelines as well as the caps document so if you are not in in in, in uh, able to get the caps document surely you do have an exam guideline or terms and definitions that have been compiled for you uh, somewhere so as per exam guideline momentum is defined as a product between mass and velocity of the object so it clearly says we are going now to talk or look at the product of mass and velocity so we can easily derive an equation for momentum from the definition so for us to do that we can easily say p is equals to mv where p it's now a, a symbol that we'll be using for momentum m is the mass and then velocity it's uh, the velocity of the object of course so we can easily say this should be measured in kg and this should be measured now in, in meters per second. Already, I will be able to generate an SI unit that I can associate with, with momentum. So the SI unit will be kg meters per, per second. But I can further go on and say, but uh, when I go back to grid 10, where I was dealing with vector quantities, I will say velocity is a vector quantity. So we know that it vector is a vector quantity. So what does it necessarily say in terms of our momentum? It says now my momentum should also be a vector vector quantity. So if it is a vector quantity, the expectation is each and every one of us should be able to say uh, it must have now both magnitude and direction. 
So I can never give an answer which does not have direction when I was calculating momentum. I cannot give an, an answer which does not have the magnitude. But remember, it will always be the magnitude and as a unit as followed by now the, the direction. So let's emphasize the issue that uh, we know all the correct SI units for different physical uh, quantities. With that, we'll be able to say, uh, once we are able to know that momentum is a vector uh, quantity, so it means you should be able to have uh, a choice or choose a direction. That is very, very key. So in everything that we do that relates with momentum, we will kindly be able to, to choose a direction. If we don't choose a direction, uh, positive to the right, negative to the left, uh, depending on the information given, it says to us, then we'll be not doing justice in terms of how to approach the concept of momentum. So momentum, key things is the definition application of the formula as well as the SI unit and remember because it's a vector quantity it must always have both magnitude and direction now moving to the second pillar let me add this one where we say we are going to talk of a collision but what is a collision a collision is an isolated event in which two objects exerts a force on each other. So one will ask, why do I need to say something about a, coll a collision before I can talk of an impulse? The reason for that is for me to understand following concepts that are related to momentum and impulse. It is ideal if I understand how collisions work. So collisions work in such a way that there's a principle that governs all the collisions we have. So that principle is what we learned in grade 11 and that is Newton, Newton third law. So with Newton third law, it basically explains, explains the mechanics The mechanics of collisions. The mechanics of collisions. The mechanics of collisions. One will ask why necessarily Newton third law. It's Newton third law because Newton third law gives us the action reaction pair in terms of the forces that we are looking for so let's have a simple scenario of an object approaching the wall so i'm going to try and duplicate this let's duplicate this and from this, then let me just select this part. I want to remove it for the purpose of my explanation. Let me remove it quickly and then delete as well as delete the, this one and this one and that one as well. Then highlight everything else here and then move it towards the side nice then we have a room to to work with so newton's third law let's have a nice and simple uh, scenario for us to explain this 
let's consider a wall. And now consider this wall as a unit. So I am going to have an object that is now moving in this direction with a certain velocity initial. But I know it is going to collide with the wall at some stage. And then it is going now to bounce back with a certain velocity V final. So let me emphasize that this is before the collision. This is during the collision. And now this is after the collision. So there are a lot of things happening in, in this situation or scenario of mine. But I'm going to look more in terms of during the, the collision. So I'm going to highlight this part and then move it further up here. To say during the collision, I am going to have my action reaction pair because now the object will be exacting the same amount of force on the wall and the wall will be exacting the same amount of force onto the object so it is important that i should be able to draw a free body diagram and say this now should be f of the ball on the wall and this should be the force of uh, the wall on the ball so and they should be equal. Hence, we are now explaining in terms of Newton third law. Newton third law explains this uh, mechanics of collisions because when an object applies a force on the wall, the wall will exact the same amount of force in an opposite direction. So in most questions, they will ask which law is applicable in terms of explaining uh, the mechanics of, of collision so definitely it should be Newton Newton third law and we should also be able to draw the correct free body diagram of the situation basically during the the collision therefore we can say but now as a still during the collision there's a lot of things happening can we draw a graph yes we can have a graph I wanted to use my lines but let me use my lines. I can have and then start another line. Good. Then I can say now this should be F max and then this should be time. What do I intend on, on saying? This should be here up to there as the time before. But now during, this is what I expect to, to see. This is what I expect to see. So exactly what is happening here when the ball hits the wall we have a point where we call compression so the the, the object is compressing uh, on the wall and then thereafter it is being released then we have our point where we call expansion so i should be able to to say but now this here It's before the collision and this year it's after the collision and here it's basically my contact time my contact time but what is it that is changing obviously the only thing that is changing here is the velocity of the object before and the velocity of the object after why is it changing it's changing because we have energy lost in most cases it's kinetic energy 
so that energy that is lost it is lost in a form of heat in a form of in a form of sound so basically the energy is not conserved so with this being said it says it allows us to move further and explain why are we going to have the change in momentum before and after the collision with the wall. Hence, I said it is important for us to understand the idea or the concept of collisions before we can move into another element, which is now uh, element number three. which is now element number three. I just want to add a new page. Add, add a page. Then move this one up there. Add a new page where we will be now looking at number three, which is just the change in momentum. The change in momentum i'm not sure what's wrong with my pen but it keeps moving momentum good so what is this change in momentum we agreed that when we look at this uh, slide here or this sheet of ours the only thing that is changing will be the velocity of the object so for us to talk of the change in momentum it says now if the velocity of the object of an object is changing or changes then the momentum of the object will also change. The momentum of an object will also, also change. That's true because we explained that during a collision, the only thing that changes there is the velocity of the object. So if the velocity of the object is changing, then the momentum will also will also change. So if the momentum is changing, how can I depict that? It says to me, I need now to have change in momentum. That is the momentum final minus the momentum initial. But because I am talking or looking at one object only i can easily say it is the mass of the object v final minus v initial so it will always be wise for me to understand that if i am going to talk of or calculate change in momentum it should be for only one object because the equation does not allow me to have any other object so it can only be only one object so this will be a hint that i use in an exam or in a test that allows me to say are they asking me to calculate for a change in momentum if that is so then it means i am only going to work with one one object so these are a few hints that we we can go further and try to 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 understand in in detail so we can have an example here of changing momentum because the second part that i want us to look into is the momentum vector so we need to have specific values for that because you cannot necessarily generalize it because once you generalize it, you will be creating another uh, misconception thereof. So let's just say, as an example, let's have a line here to divide the two. Let's have a line here. 
let's select this lines let's have a line here to just divide the two and then we'll be able to say now this as an example uh we have v initial which is 20 meters per second uh, right and then we have v final which is 30 meters per second left and then we have the mass of an object which is just 0, 0,05 seven kg so for me to calculate the momentum or the change in momentum that is the question calculate the change in momentum so i am going to do it in multi steps just for us to be able to see how when we get to momentum vectors so i'm going to start by calculating p initial which will be just mv and then i decide to choose my direction remember we're working with a vector uh, to the right as as positive so i'm going to have something like 0, 0,057 multiply by 20 and then I'm going to have my P final, which is also equals to NV. I am going to have it as 0, 0,057. Multiply now by minus, minus 30. So I'm going to get something like uh, minus 1,71. Sorry about that. 71 kg meters per second and now this is to the left then i am going to have here something like 1,14 kg meters per second and now this is to the right can i get my change yes i can get my change which would be p final minus p initial this will be just minus 1 comma 171 minus 1 comma 14 which will give me negative 2 comma 85 kg meters per second then let's copy this information of the calculation and let's copy this okay that's fine let's just go to this page we have our values there we have changing p sorry we have our changing p as negative 2,85 kg meters per second so this is our final answer which informs us that changing p is basically 2,85 kg meters per second now the negative informs us that it is to to the left we need now to draw a momentum vector diagram so to draw a momentum vector diagram it will be easy for me to say let me have my line and then this line here start it here this line will represent my p initial so this p initial to the right which is 1,14 kg meters per second then i can have another line as well that will represent p final 
so this is just p final which was minus 1 comma 7 1 kg meters per second then i must now have my changing p so for me to have my changing p it will be from here uh, all the way there because now it's just sum and then i am going to have something like changing p which is equals to 2,85 kg meters per, per second so there isn't an easier way of doing uh, these problems especially when you are given you, in a sense that you need now to draw a momentum vector diagram momentum vector vector diagram so the easiest way is to calculate them individually such that you are able to get exactly uh, that change that we need so this will be our momentum vector diagram which uh, in previous years uh, most of us were not doing it we're omitting it but recently it it it, it came to part where uh, it's being assessed a couple of times so it clearly shows that uh, we we have challenges when it, it it comes to drawing this this vector diagrams and then at number five uh, we have graph of velocity versus time graph of velocity uh, versus time so the graph of velocity versus time i'm going to draw a line also uh, will have something like this and let's have a line here also and I'm just going to have a free hand just for the sake of time then I'm going to have this part here and then this part here and then this part here so I'm going to explain each and every one of them remember this side we have our velocity and then this side obviously we have our time in in seconds but remember our object uh, started with 20 and then we ended up having something like like 30 but what does this say to me when i look at it this here it's the part or you can say this is during the collision because what happened during the collision is we had now a change in in direction until we got to this uh, 30 uh, meters per second and we initially started with uh, 20 meters per second so basically this graph even though it's velocity versus time we can further ex extend it for the graphs of momentum and other graphs that we feel that the examiner or the assessor will be able to 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 ask so it's easy for us to understand that the plus or minus in this case they just indicate choice of direction so the plus here for us was towards the right and then the minus here for us was just towards the left so hence we are able now to represent it in terms of a momentum vector diagram also be able to represent it in terms of a uh, velocity versus time so graphs are very important uh, the diagnostic report has showed us that majority of us are failing in terms of how to comprehend information from the graph to the calculation or even drawing the, the vector diagrams thereof. Then we can further move. Okay, let's start with our center. 
your center is still momentum and impulse so let's start with our number seven so our number seven uh, it says newton's second law in terms of momentum so in grade 11 we explained newton's laws in detail so if you are still uncertain about are you able to define newton's second law kindly go back to your grade 11 notes refer to that and kindly ensure that you are able to explain in detail uh, Newton's second law or even state it or also apply it because remember uh, Newton's laws are also part of the 12 syllabus so we are expected here to define or state Newton's second law in terms of uh, the momentum so as per the exam guideline it says uh, it is the net force exerted on an object on an object is equal to the rate of change in momentum so what are the keywords the net force that is exerted is equal to the rate of change in momentum and remember rate is a measure of time so we we should be able to express this in terms of a certain particular equation so we are going to be able to say f net is equals to changing p which is the change in momentum over the changing t so f net or the force exerted on an object is equal to the rate of change in momentum where we just know that rate is a measure of time hence we have a uh, that changing time as our our variable as well then we can further say there's a greater link between newton's second law in terms of momentum as well as uh, our number eight which is now uh, impulse so at number eight we also uh, define it uh, in terms of uh, the equation itself so from the equation we are able to say impulse is the product of the resultant force of the resultant force acting on an object acting on an object acting on an object and the time the resultant force acts on an object the resultant force acts on an object so let's look for the keywords again it is the product of the resultant force and time so from this equation if we try and make our 
change in momentum our resultant uh, sorry not our resultant but our subject of the formula then we are going to have f net multiply by change in t which is just equals to change in p so this basically says this here should be my impulse so for that also i can generate the si unit and then the si unit should be something like newton second but f net multiply by change in t is also equals to kg meters per second so we can even say oh kg meters per second so depending on the information that is given it will be best for us to uh, clearly indicate and understand uh, which si unit should we use so both si units are applicable but the key idea is just kindly look at which information is given in most cases if you are using mass and velocities it will be kg meters per second but if you're using the information where you are given uh, the net force and also a uh, change in t so previously the mistake that majority of us were doing is we are not aware now that this is the net force so remember net force is just the sum of all forces acting on an object so that is the mistake that majority of us are, are doing if we are given a scenario where we have multiple forces acting on an object we forget to calculate the net force so it is advisable that uh, when you are given a statement or a certain information or the stem of a question, kindly try to follow it through in terms of how many forces are acting there. So if you have two or more, kindly calculate now your, your net force. Because once you are not able to calculate the net force, it says automatically everything will be, will be wrong. But it is always important to have at number nine it's daily application daily application of impulse daily application of of impulse so impulse is a very important concept or principle in, in, in physics paper one because it explains a majority of our daily lives especially in terms of different collisions that occur uh, on daily so it's one concept that assists us in terms of understanding uh, how different safety principles work so basically it addresses issues of safety and now with issues of safety we are going to try and say uh, how does it assist us in terms of understanding how airbags works uh, something like uh, crumple zones crumple zones uh, something like arrestor beds as well arrestor arrest pets and all other principles of of sports for instance uh, in sports uh, we'll be looking for a tennis player or in tennis let's just say tennis and also maybe in in boxing as well so basically it works around uh, this this two uh, issues of safety it's your airbag crumple zones an uh, airbag goes hand in hand with your seat belt so we need to apply this principle of impulse when we are asked now to explain fully how uh, this principle applies in terms of of safety so i'm going to just do one of an airbag uh, but generally that's how 
we, we, we need to explain because majority of questions will come and say, explain using principles of physics, how an airbag reduces impact or passengers being uh, seriously injured. So I'm just going to use one uh, and then that one will be in an issue of an airbag. But remember, uh, the principle is applicable to all of them. It's the same thing. It's just a way of expla uh, exp uh, explaining uh, what the examiner wants to see. So the examiner, because is asking us to look for or explain in terms of physics principle. The first thing to say is, let's have a line here that we can use to divide so that we don't make it more complex. And then for the issue of an airbag, we'll start by saying according to F net is equals to changing P over changing T. Yeah. An airbag, an airbag increases increases the contact time time between the passenger and the dashboard for that matter and the dashboard that is the first thing that the airbag does but now when the airbag increases the contact time what happens thereafter it says now the net force the net force decreases the net force decreases for the same change in momenta so once the net force is being decreased it means now the force of impact is going to be less on the passenger and the passenger is going to be less less injured then we can maybe edit here to say then passenger will be less injured that is how this principle work but now it's important to emphasize the use of this equation why the use of this equation because the rule says explain using the concepts of physics or physics principles so for us to ensure that we are in the right direction let's kindly start by saying according to F net is equal to changing P, which is now the physics principle that uh, the examiner will be will be looking for. So we, we, we need to emphasize that. If you do not have this equation, somehow your statement or the principle would have not been applied as per uh, the desired the desired goal. So kindly emphasize that according to F net is equals to changing t over changing t when airbag inflates it increases the contact time between the passenger and the dashboard so once the contact time is increased it means the net force decreases for the same change in in momentum because the momentum will remain the same because we are talking of the same object therefore the passenger will be will be less less injured so we are expected to apply this 
situation the statement hence i said it will be basically the same for an airbag seat belt crumple zone and a resta bed as well as for tennis and 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 box, boxing so when when we have time when we further extend our lessons we will uh, look into scenarios or situations where we can apply this physics principle uh, in our daily daily application then we understand that one key thing that the examiner also wants us to understand is at number 10 it's conservation of linear momenta conservation of linear momenta conservation of linear momenta the expectation here is for us that we should be able to state the conservation which basically says the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant let's look for the keywords it's a definition so the keyword is the total momentum isolate system remains 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 constant so when it is the total momentum it means the sum before the sum it means the sum before of the total momentums should be equal to the total sum of momentums after this is the principle whatever happens here after will be a question dependent it will depend on the type of the question that the examiner has given us but once we are able to apply or expected to apply the conservation of linear momentum this should be the first step thereof i usually say whatever comes after this it will be situation based situation based i mean it will depend on the type of a situation that that we have so this will be the principle so when they say to us state the conservation of linear momentum the right way of saying it's the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains const uh, uh, constant but there's a key word here also isolated system so what is an isolated system an isolated system is a system is a system in which the resultant force resultant force is zero very very important so for us to say the momentum is conserved it means it must be in an isolated system in an isolated system the resultant force is equal to zero so when we do our calculations these are the key uh, ways to look for isolated system once it is isolated system it becomes easy for us to uh, do the correct calculations and explain uh, 
it in 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 detail so kindly look for words like isolated uh, conserved or remains constant so it will only be uh, conserved if the resultant force is zero in that system then we have different scenarios so we have scenarios see we have different scenarios and scenario number one which is the easiest one maybe to understand uh, it's an explosion where we are expected to apply uh, such conservation of linear momentum so in a expl explosion the sum of p initial is always equals to kg meters per second how can we tell this will be in a situation where i have this this is now just before and then after i now have two different dif different pieces so an explosion will just basically say uh, this one breaks into 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 two then i can have a situation where uh, two objects collide and move two objects collide and move together after collision so in this case they move together as a unit so it means after the collision we have one unit so depending on the situation you'll have one that combines with this one that combines with this one and then it will give us something like this and then the third one it's when they move two objects collide and move separately move separately after the collision so let's add a new page so adding a new page will say i'm going to have this and this collide then they move and then each one of them is still independent somehow so these are kind of uh, scenarios that we need to, to expect but they will be more clearer or even clear when we work with uh, exam type of questions when we work with uh, previous question papers then it's when i believe everything will be will be clear and make sense but remember you cannot move forward before you understand uh, the basic concepts so the, the basic concepts build towards the more complex uh, things that we we want to to deal with so the last part of this lesson should be at number 11 and 12 so this is types of collisions this is now types of collisions so we have type two types of uh, collisions let me have my lines here uh, you have and then this then we can easily say you have your elastic and then you have your in 
elastic collision. So in an elastic collision, both total momentum and kinetic energy kinetic energy are conserved are conserved then in an inelastic momentum is conserved momentum is conserved but kinetic energy is not conserved. Total kinetic energy not conserved. Why is it not conserved? Because energy is lost. And it is lost in a form of heat, sound, and at times light, depending how intense is the, uh, the collision. So generally, most collisions in our daily lives will be in elastic, in elastic uh, collisions because... Uh, in most cases, energy will be lost. Uh, you will hear a sound, you will hear light, or there will be heat. So somehow a spark in, in when two cars are colliding. So it is in most cases that uh, majority of our collisions will be inelastic collisions. But remember, you will be expected also to prove that uh, this collision is it inelastic or elastic. So when it comes to that point where the examiner wants us to prove that uh, the collision is elastic or inelastic, the best thing to do is now to calculate the total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic energy after. If they are equal, then we say they are conserved. But when you calculate the total kinetic energy before, and it's not equal to the total kinetic energy after, then we say that collision should be inelastic. It is inelastic because the total kinetic energy, it's not, it's not conserved. So let's add the last part, which is the graphs. That will be now number 12. So with, with graphs, they consistently change because of what we need to assess or what is expected of us to know. So there, there isn't a major or a general way of a specific graph to look for. So I'm just going to draw a general one of momentum versus time. So with this one of momentum versus time, everything will be in such a way that if it's for a collision, if it's for a collision, then we should be able to say we have now our object A with a certain amount of momentum. We have now our object B with a certain amount of momentum. So this side we have momentum versus, versus time. So this here will basically be our initial momentum this is P initial for A, and this is P initial for B. But are they moving in the same direction? No, they are not moving in the same direction because remember we said 
uh, momentum is a vector quantity so this one it means it is moving in a positive uh, direction this one now is moving in a negative direction so it can be left or right but we definitely know that they are not moving in the same in the same direction then what else can we say about this graph this part here will represent during the collision so that part is during the collision so from the scenarios we have where we said you can have an explosion of which in this case it is not an explosion you can have two objects that collide and move together after the collision so i'm going to try and represent this one here so when they move together after the collision it means they must have now the same amount of momentum and also they should be moving as a unit so in this case i should be able to say if they are going to move together as a unit so somewhere here yes then they should meet somewhere here and then continue to move as as a unit so this part here should be a momentum after so this is p after the collision and you can see now they are going to have the same amount of uh, momentum because now they are moving as a unit so if they are not moving as a unit what will be the case thereof it means you are going to have a situation where we are able to say let's remove this and we want a situation where now they are not moving as a unit so if they are not moving as a unit what should we do if they are not moving as a unit it's that part during the collision then each one of them has now a different direction to take so this will be still p of b after and then this will be p of a after as well so you can easily see that this part here will be during during the collision so these graphs will, will change depending on what situation uh, do you have or what is it that the examiner is, is giving to you but remember this is just an overall uh, concept or a lesson so it means we will further enhance it with different types of questions with different uh, set of multiple trans questions just to emphasize how best can we approach uh, the, uh, the momentum and an impulse so for me thank you very much and kindly don't forget to subscribe and like our facebook page which is nambani academy uh, institute for math and science and on youtube it is uh, nambani academy tell your friend about us because we are young and uh, growing so the idea is we we should be able to reach the maximum number of uh, people that that need need our help so what we are going to do now is uh, the documents will be available of course the, the pdf document will be available on the descriptions below where you can download maybe uh, the pdf version of this and then the video obviously it's it's what we've been watching so from me to you thank you very much and have a lovely day